literally standing there so that you could hit him with a chandelier, right? Like, <laughs> and I'm so I'm I'm like I'm kind of conflicted about about set pieces like that, right? Um, my my interest in see that's see that I liked because right like that was not like served up for me, right? Yeah, well, and and uh, you know. And I guess, you know, you can look at the first one as, like, showing you how the thing works. Um, but then the, the second one, to me, was the one that was legit, right? Where where it, it just emerged naturally in the course of play. Yeah, that sh I'm like, pretty convinced that chandelier is going to swing forever. There's, there's, no, there's no damping there. <laughs> but then, like, when did this game come out? It's almost 10 years old now, right? Yeah, so... so one thing that I think uh, is easy to take for granted is just just how much the possibilities have in increased in the last ten years from the point of view of state of the art in game engines, right? Like, uh, okay, yeah, we're gonna move to the shield because um, I know uh, the I forget who who you can see your feet. We wondered about that. Um, I forget who the developer was from Arcane, but they did a, a talk at, at Game Developers Conference about the development of their melee combat. Um, and there were some things that they had to go through in their process that I just found shockingly awful. I, I pitied, I pitied that they, the, what they had to do for hit detection and go listen to the talk if you're interested. I won't, I won't bore you with the details. Um, but, uh, except to say that, that, uh, you know, with, with, the the, the physics support that, you know, we kind of just take for granted now, like the the things that were really big struggles for them in terms of hit detection and such like are I don't anticipate any any trouble in a modern engine with with those same those same situations so yeah and so this is just this is just uh um it's automatically inverse kinematic like just raising the shield into your to to, to intercept those incoming arrows right um, there's, that's not an action that you're an interface action that you're undertaking. Your your part of this is just to keep the shield oriented in the right direction, correct? Right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's IK. I think it's just an animation. Yeah, okay. But pretty much as long as I'm looking like within 15 degrees. Shoot, I think I'm throwing chandeliers. In you're the back this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very important distinctions we have to draw here. Need battle of matter. That's his. That's his punishment for defying you. Yeah, dragging bodies is really awesome in this game. I gotta admit, this is how you pick up a body. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I don't. What it like? It seems like the only people. Can Can you think of games with with dragging bodies as an important feature, like other than Thief and games by Arcane Studios? Um, <laughs> Hitman. It was kind of one of the core. Yeah. Okay. Games. Right. Yeah. And it was. It was very similar. Like it was arduous. It slows you down, and you can only do so much. This game, it's a little more sloppy, which is cool, and it actually feels better. <laughs> yeah, I can go wherever I want. Granted, I'm carrying 200 pounds of, of dead meat with me. <laughs> yeah. Huh. <laughs> he has a name. His name is A. A corpse. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Once he had dreams and plans for the future like you and me, and now he's two hundred pounds of meat. That's the human condition right there. You won't make it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. Special attacks. Oh yeah. The, okay. So you did the charge sort of briefly, right? Like the, that's. Don't move, buddy. Uh, question: uh, Can players impale themselves on the spiked walls? Oh, that is a good question. Charge a spike wall. Yeah, charge a spike wall. I dare, I double dog dare you to charge a spike wall. I don't think you can. I think I tried to, or I walked into one accidentally. It hurt me at all. Uh, see, that that shows a lack of commitment. 
the AI can kick you and perish. You would think that you know the environmental dangers would apply to, to the player too. Fire, I presume, is yeah. That's a chilly breeze. On the other hand, I can see we're actually like running into one of those spiked walls would 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 even more than usual raise the question of like why do we why do we even have those? All right, yeah, I just want to. You're you're right. We need to stop and yeah, that would totally be an achievement of kicking the guy like onto that fire from way up here. And that's. Oh yeah, why don't you pick that lock? Ah, okay, here we go. How do you pick locks in this game? Like that. I don't know what you just did. You just, you just spend a lock pick? It's one of those? Yeah. This is a nice, quiet place. What are girls good for? Girls are good for using... If you don't know the spells, just use them. Ready? And what? A lot like Skyrim. So that that was the make my hands glow kind of white and purple spell. Yes. Was 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 was, what, was there some other effect that might have occurred in other circumstances? Uh, I'm sure. I haven't actually used the charm on any enemy. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. We actually, uh, on, on DDO, we actually had a level where... DDO is what now? Dungeons and Dragons Online. Oh, you were associated with that game, that crystal Slightly. Was for Menelag. Um, Menelag is yeah, there was actually a level where we animated um, inanimate objects. So they actually sort of did the uh, Fantasia dance. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it was kind of cool. <laughs> Oh. Did that, did you just destroy that floor? Excellent. <laughs> nice. If you, if you had been, if you had been sword fighting the guy and blocking the floor as you fell. <laughs> Someone write down destructible floors. Get on that. Okay, done. Right. I'll add it up. <laughs> the thing, I, I happen to know I can rely on Chris to like actually take notes about the blather yeah, yeah, that... Yeah, yeah. That we do during these. Running into it also doesn't hurt. I kind of somehow this puts me in mind of like one of the early bug reports in Ultima World One, though, right? We're like, I it was probably John Buck, who was a, a, a college and afterward roommate of you know Doug Church and I and some of those other guys of that crowd. Uh, like the first thing he does when we sit him down and give him a chance to play the multiple, he, see, he sees that he has fish in his inventory and starts throwing them at goblins. And then he busts our ass about the fact that like the goblins don't react to the fact that someone's throwing fish at them. So maybe, maybe what I'm saying here is that when we expect you to take damage from the spike walls, we're we're expecting too much. <laughs> it might not be a game about that. How do you feel about um, movement in this game? Um, I I don't know. Um, like I I have a kind of a conditioned reaction against movement that's 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 too fast. Uh, um, I find I'm kind of a control freak. So if you put me in a shooter, for example, like I am going to I'm going to hate myself really quickly. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, it, it kind of feels okay though. Like, um, it's, it's definitely quick, but it's not, it's not the sort of like lightning quick thing that you get in, in a, like I say, in a shooter. Um, and it's meant to be like a fast paced game. So I don't know. Uh, I, 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 like I said, I've, I've only played it for a little less than, less than well. So it's the, the feel of playing it and, and what you get out of watching it can be very different things as well. What were you? That was a jar of oil. It's curious to see if uh, oil on the wall. Oh was yeah, there. that would be nice. Like having, yeah. Someone write down flammable decals. <laughs> uh, 
Well, actually, I should talk to... Jeff and I are overdue for a meeting about his fire system, actually. Speaking of that, um, those of you who have been watching our backer updates would have seen this, uh, what, two weeks ago, I think, was when we did the update about, about fires? I forget. Well, yeah. Um, which is definitely, I mean, that's a system that they were clearly very interested in in this game. So, so Will, let me ask you: Did 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 you anticipate the fact that you were suddenly not playing this game? <laughs> this is this this is this is this is something that sticks in my craw, right? Like, um, there's 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 a definite art to slipping between interactivity and cutscenes, and to me, I think it's it's very much based on the player having the expectation that that their action is about to trigger a change in in control. There's, there's one game that does that, and I don't mind at all, and that's um, the darkness. The darkness takes a, away control from your character for one of the cutscenes, and I think it's one of the few spots where it takes control away. I could be wrong about that, but it does it contextually. Like, there's a reason it takes control away from you is because there's you know, an evil entity that holds you back as it uh, murders someone that you love in the game. Sure. So like there, there like it's you know there's it's consonant between what's happening to the player and what's happening to the character at least, right? It's not like why am I standing here watching things go on? That is that is true. It's, it's, it's a nice sky. There's no time. Don't tell me you're afraid of heights. Someone definitely put some, some uh, TLC in there. actually one of the few chase scenes in an FPS that I enjoyed. So, um, so uh, what do you think contributes to that? Um, it, just good, tight motion controls. And um, they didn't make any of the, the jumpy puzzle parts, which can be really difficult in an, in, in an FPS. They didn't make them overly difficult. It was it's more gone. like Not navigating it across through the a terrain. Quickly. Then you know, making sure you make the impossible. This is jump. a dead end. Try the other way. Get, get a good job. There it is. I see it. It won't get yeah. away. I think an, another thing about that that I see right is, um, you know, part of part of a chase right is it, unless you're doing it for the for the for the tenth or twentieth time because it keeps busting your ass. Um, like a great part of the task that the player has to pay attention to is just tracking what the guy they're chasing is doing right and it's it's easy for for developers and playtesters who become like really familiar with the scenario to forget just how much mental effort and attention goes into just that part of it and so they they it's it, there's a pitfall there of overloading the player with other tasks Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I actually I suspected earlier when I, I saw all this like wall crawling and stuff that, that um you know a lot of it was on uh, on set paths. Um and I suspect that even more watching this, but um but uh but having said that, um the the their presentation is doing a good job of of uh of hiding that fact. Now. Yeah, I think one of the games that we'll look at at some point in the future, um, uh, Mirror's Edge. Um, other than the first couple of levels, which are very much you know a set puzzle, um, that does a really good job of. Of kind of showing you where to go, but you can improvise on top of that. And you know, the motion controls in that game are just kind of you know, the whole game's around the core. So I don't think we'll go that far. No, but I think it's definitely something that that we concern ourselves with, right? Like we're we're being interested in action and physics and the intersection of them, and the and and presenting the underworld as a as a sort of character. You know, part of that is like having having opportunities to like really deeply engage with the terrain. Right, and, and that means that we're